Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 1-2 of October, November 2018 of Additional Math, paper 1. So let's move on to question number 1. So here we have this equation. Uh, solve 1 plus square root of sine x plus 5 equal to 0 for x between these two. That's the range uh, of x. So how do we solve this? So step 1, uh, we will just send 1 to the other side become minus 1 then sine x plus 50 equal to minus 1 over square root of 2 so it is a negative value if you look at your quadrants this is a s t c if sine is negative it will be in this and this in these two quadrants so now we can solve this Let's see what do we have. We have sine inverse of minus 1 over this. So let's try. So we can just use our calculator set to degrees. Um, sine inverse 1 by divide by, so it is minus 1 divide by square root of 2. That should give me minus 45. So minus 45 is the first value. So where's minus 45? So this is the positive direction, so minus 45 will be here. That will be 45 here. So this is correct because this is in the C where where sine is negative. So the other the other place where negative value of sine is is in this direction. So we have to find from here we have to find this angle. This is 180 plus 45, which is 225. So right now we have x plus 50 equal to 145 and 225. x equal to minus 45 minus 50 or 225 minus 50. So uh, first one will be minus 95 and this one will be so 225 minus 50 that will be 175. So now we verify the range. It is inside this range, so these two are good. And that will be question number one. Question number two, find the equation of the curve which has a tangent of four at this point. This is x and y coordinates, and such that d to y by dx2 is this. So equation of curve is actually y. So how do you find y from this? So we have to integrate d2 y and dx2 by dx, we will get dy by dx. And if we reintegrate dy by dx, we get y. So, so first step is to integrate this one. So let's do that. Integration of 5 plus e2x dx. For dy, this is dy by dx. So let's do that. Well, let's see what we have. This becomes 5x plus e 2x over 2 plus c that is dy by dx so here we see that it says the gradient is equal to 4 which means dy by dx is equal to 4 when x equal to 0 so let's replace this in this equation so dy by dx equal to 4 when x equal to 0 so 0 plus e power 0 over 2 plus c so what is the value of c? c will be 4 minus 1 over 2. That will be 7 over 2. So from this we have dy by dx is equal to 5x plus e2x over 2 plus 7 over 2. So now to get y from this, well we have to reintegrate this. dy by dx with respect to x. That will be 5x plus e 2x over 2 plus 7 over 2 dx. So that will get 5x squared divided by 2 plus e 2x divided by 2 that will be 4 and plus 7 2 x plus c that is y. So we have to find the value of c we can use the point. The point says that when the value of x is 0, 
the value of y is minus 3. So let's find the value of c. So 0, so minus 3 here for y, and the rest becomes 0 here, because become 1 over 4, and 0 plus c. So from this, c equals to minus 3 minus 1 over 4, which is minus 12 minus 1 over 4, which is minus 13 over 4. So finally, the equation will be y equal to 5x squared over 2 plus e 2x over 4 plus 7x over 2 plus c is minus 13 over 4. So that is enough. If you want to simplify, you can, you can do that. You can take out 1 over 4 out. You will have uh, 2 times will be 10 x squared plus e 2x plus 14 x minus 13 that will be your y and that is question uh, number two for the equation of the curve moving on to uh, question number three here we have on the axis below sketch the graph of y equal to modulus 6 minus 3y so showing the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the axis so pretty easy. Um, the first step we just have to let's find where does it cut the y-axis and the x-axis. So let's say at x-axis y equal to zero. So if y equal to zero, uh, this will be equal to zero. This will give me x equal to two. First point is two, zero. That's the first point here. Now let's say if x equal to zero y will be 6 so that will be 0 6 0 6 so you can see that the graph is coming in this direction it's going down but you have to remember that a modulus graph is always positive it will always be above this line so let's find a value here let's say um, if the value of x is 4 so if x is 4 what is the value of y y will be modulus of 6 minus 3 times 4 will be 12 that will be minus 6 which is 6 so 4 6 will be here so now let's draw this curve sorry it's a line <laughs> it's not a curve so we have to connect this one to this and then this will bounce off the line of x-axis to give you this one so this is your line y equal to 6 minus 3x so if you want to uh, know something else too um, let's write this down so we can find this so what is the equation of this line this part of the line the equation is equal to so this is this is extra you don't need to know this for now but just to um, to advise this will be the line 6 minus 3x and what is this line this will be the line 3x minus 6 just for you to know so now for this one part 2 we have to solve this equation this is at this is y equal to 2 so what we can do is we can just draw a you see it clears the graph at two points so we have one point here and one point here so the values of x will be the answer so when we have this we have a few options what we can do is we can do this uh, option number one we can do 6 minus 3x equal to 2 or you can say minus 3x equal to 2 you solve it this way here you will have 3x equal to 6 minus 2 will be 4 so x will be 4 over 3 that's the first value here we can have minus 6 plus 3x equal to 2 3x equal to 8 x will be 8 over 3 so we have the two values of x or if you want to you can always just do that you can always just square both sides you will have 6 3x square equal to 4 and then you solve by expanding the brackets you will have these two answers so this will be your values of x for this equation 
now for this one, hence, uh, find the values of x for which 6, this is y, is more than 2. So very easy. You go back to your graph. Where is y, this graph, more than 2? It will be before this. So for x before this point, it is more than 2. And for x after this point, is more than 2. So uh, we will say for x before this and for x more than this it will be more than the value of 2 and that will be your question number 3 question number 4 we have y equal to x cubed ln 2x plus uh, 1 now find dy by dx when x equal to 3 uh, so we first have to find dy by dx so we have to use the product rule so the first one remain the same we have to multiply by uh, let's use a different color here by uh, dy by dx of ln 2x plus 1 and then we have 2 plus second one remain the same and then you have to multiply by dy by dx of the first one which is x cube so let's solve so that will be x3 times 1 over 2x plus 1 times 2 so differentiation of this will give you 2 plus ln of 2x plus 1 this will give you 3x squared so we don't need to find the exact value we can just solve we have to find the value of dy by dx when x so dy by dx when x equal to 0 0.3 so replace here we will have 2 0 0.3 power 3 divided by 2 0 0.3 plus 1 plus ln 2 0 0.3 uh, plus 1 times 3 0 0.3 power 2. So let's solve using our calculator. So for the first part, 2 times 0 0.3 square, sorry, power 3, there will be this, divided by 2 times 0 0.3 plus 1. That will give me, for the first part it is 0 0.03375 plus, so for this one it will be, so 1 by 1, uh, ln of 2 times 0 0.3 plus 1 that should give me times 3 times 0 0.3 square that will give me 0 0.12690 0 0.09 so if you add those two plus 0 0.03375 that will give me 0 0.161 correct to 3SF for the value of dy by dx at this point so now moving on to uh, part 2 hence find the approximate increase in y when x increases from this to this so pretty easy so uh, we have already dy by dx at x equal to 0 0.3 is 0. 161 so the increase in y is equal to so we have a 0 0.01 times h for the increase change in x so 0 0.161 times h for the change in y for this increase in x that will be question number four moving on to question number five it says that the seventh term in the expansion of this in ascending uh, powers of x is this much it is given that a and b are positive constant show that b is equal to this okay so let's give it a try we know that the seventh term is equal to this so let's find the seventh term of this expansion so how would you find that um, let's try so seventh term for the power to become six we have to have 12 choose so first one is a term second term will be bx term for the power to be 6 
it needs to be 6 here and if this is 6 this also needs to be 6 and this will be 6 as well this is the same as the last one so let's do that so what is 12 to 6 12 to 6 that will be 9 24 a power 6 and then b6 x6 equal to 9 24 x6 so now we have to compare the uh, this two so the coefficient of x power 6 is this one and this one so we say 9 24 a6 b power 6 equal to 9 24 so from this we can see that a b power 6 is equal to 1 so a b is equal to 1 so b is equal to 1 over a this is shown as required as required okay. now for this one it says the sixth term in the expansion of this in ascending powers of x is this find the value of a and b so this one is the same uh, is the same 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 expansion but now it, it's giving me the sixth term so how would you find the sixth term from this so sixth term will be 12 choose a and b x for it to be power 5 here needs to be 5 and this will be 5 and this will be 7 this will be 198 x power 5 now so what is 12 choose 5 uh, 12 choose 5 will be 792 so 792 a power 7 times b power 5 x power 5 equal to 198 x 5 so now we equate the coefficients of x power 5 so here we have on one side we have 7 9 2 with a power 7 times b power 5 equal to 198 so what is a power 7 and b power 5 it is 198 divided by 792 so let's do that 198 divided by answer that will be 1 over 4 this 1 over 4 so using the answer from first part where b is equal to so b equal to 1 over a so a power 7 b power 5 is 1 over a power 5 is equal to a power 7 times 1 over a power 5 is equal to a square so a square is equal to 1 over 4 so a will be square root of 1 over 4 which is 1 over 2 so from this we know that b is equal to 1 over a which is 2 so your answer will be the value of a and b so a would be half and b will be 2 that will be the values of a and b and that is question number 5 question number 6 part 1 find d by dx of this function so let's do that so first step is to multiply the power that will be 5x squared minus 125 and power minus 1 that will be minus 1 over 3 and multiply by the differentiation of the inside that will be 10x so that will be 20x over 3 times 5x2 minus 125 1 over 3 that will be part 1 uh, now part 2 using your answer to part 1 find this so part 1 we have differentiating this we get this so it means that if you were to integrate this which is 20x over 3 times 5 minus 125 by dx you would get this one which is 5x squared minus 125 2 over 3 
So using this fact, let's find this. So this is where we take out this one. So this will be um, 125 minus 1 over 3 dx. So how would you bring this to this side? You have 2 times 3 and divide by 20. That will be your answer for this part. That will be part 2. And now part 3, you have to solve the uh, this one. Limits of 10 and 6. So let's do that. So let's take this factor out. And we have 5x squared minus 125. 2 over 3, 10 and 6. So 1 by 1, 3, 2. So for this one we have uh, 5, 10 squared is 100 minus 125. That will be 2 over 3 minus 536 minus 125, 2 over 3. So let's simplify and see what we have. So what is 500 minus 125? It is 375. So 375 to power 3 minus. So 5 times 36 minus 125. That will be 55 power 2 over 3. So let's solve and find the answer. So for the first one, it is 375 power 2 over 3 minus 55 power 2 over 3. That will be this much. And then we have 2 uh, times 3 divided by 20. That will be 6880. So I think I might have made a mistake. Let's try again. So 2 divided by 3 is this. So 375 power answer minus 55 power answer. That will be uh, different. So let's try again. <laughs> it's different. Uh, so 375 power 2 divided by 3 minus 55 power 2 divided by 3. That should give me this value. In this case is way different than this. So multiply by 3 divided by 20. That should be 5.63. So answer for this one is 5.63 for part 3. And that is question uh, number 6. Question number 7. We have a vector V has a magnitude of 39 units and is in the same direction as this. Write V in this form. So very easy. We first have to find the unit vector in this direction. So how do you find the unit vector? You have to take this vector, divide by its magnitude. It will be... 44 plus 25 that will be minus this over 13 so V is equal to unit of 39 times this one for the same direction that will be 1 3 becomes minus 36 over 15 that will be the value of V so for part B, our vectors P and Q are such that P is equal to this and Q is equal to this, where R and S are constants. Given that 2P plus 3Q is equal to 0, find the values of R and S. So one by one, let's replace. We have 2P. What is 2P? 2P is this vector plus 3Q is this vector. is equal to 0, 0. So we have to expand one by one. So here we have 2R for the first line. We have 2R plus 2S plus 15R plus 3 is equal to 0. That's the first line. Let's simplify. We have 2S. Uh, then we have plus 17R equal to minus 3. That's equation number 1. So for the second line, we have 2R plus 12 plus 6S minus 3 equal to 0. 
So let's simplify. Here we have 6s plus 2r. 12 minus 3 is plus 9. Send this will be minus 9. That will be equation number 2. So we can make 2s the subject of formula. So let's do that. So 2s is equal to minus 3 minus 17r. So here we have 6x. 6x is 3 times 2s. And 2s is minus 3 minus 17r plus 2r equal to minus 19. So let's simplify. This becomes minus 9 minus 51r plus 2r equal to minus 9. So minus 51 plus 2 will be minus 49r equal to 0. r will be 0. So what is the value of s? So 2s equal to minus 3 minus 17, 0. s will be minus 3 over 2. So r is 0. s will be minus 3 over 2. That is question number 7. Question uh, number eight. So we have matrix A is equal to this. So find the values of A for which this does not exist. So when A inverse does not exist, we say the determinant of A is equal to zero, which means if you cross multiply A times A plus four minus uh, four times three is 12 is equal to zero. So A squared plus four A minus 12 is zero. So you factorize a squared is a times a 12 is 6 times 2 to get plus 4 you have to plus 6 minus 2 so two values of a a will be minus 6 a will be 2 that will be part 1 uh, now part 2 given that a is equal to this find a inverse so the matrix a will be 4 3 4 8 to find a inverse we first have to find the determinant of a which is 4 times 8 minus 3 times 4 that will be 32 minus 12 that is 20 now we have to also define the adjoint matrix of A so adjoint A is equal to so we switch the position becomes 8 here and 4 here this becomes minus 3 and minus 4 so now A inverse is equal to 1 over determinant which is 20 times adjoint of a will be 8 minus 4 minus 3 and 4 that is the value of a inverse now for part 3 uh, find the matrix b such that a b equal to this so you have to observe how do you find b you have to get rid of a so how do you get rid of a you have to times a inverse times a b so this becomes this goes away as i so since you multiplied a in front of b so in front of a you also have to multiply the same thing on this side so let's simplify so here we have b is equal to a inverse which is 1 over 20 from this part we have that uh, 8 minus 4 minus 3 4 times this one 2 4 3 minus 5 so as always rows by column so it's 8 times 2 is 16 16 minus 12 that will be 4 so let's check 8 times 2 plus minus 3 times 4 that will be 4 and next one 8 times 3 will be 24 minus sorry plus uh, minus 3 times minus 5 will be 15 that will be 39 now this one rows by column minus 4 times 2 will be minus 8 minus 8 plus 16 will be 8 uh, minus 12 plus minus 20 minus 12 minus 20 minus 32 so your b will be equal to 1 over 20 times this for 8, 39, and minus 32. And that will be your matrix B. That will be question number 8.
Question number 9. The polynomial p of x is equal to this cubic function. It is divisible by x plus 3. It is given that p prime of 0 is 36 and p double prime of 0 is 86. So we have to find the values of a, b, and c. So for the first one, this one means, what does it mean? It means that if you take p, x plus 3 is the value of minus 3, it should be 0. This is what it means. So let's do this and see what do we have. So p of minus 3 will give me a. So minus 3 will be minus 27 plus 9b plus minus 3c minus 9 should give me 0. So simplify, we have minus 27a plus 9b minus 3c equal to 9. That's equation number 1. So for this one, p prime of 0 is 36. So what is p prime? p prime of x is just d by dx of px. So let's do that. We will have 3ax square plus 2bx plus c. So it says p prime of 0 is 36. So p prime of 0 that will be 3, 0, plus 2, 0, plus c equal to 36. It means that c is equal to 36. That will be one value. Now for the next one, p prime 2 of 0 equal to 86. So it means that p prime of x, double prime, is d by dx of this. So let's find the value. So here we have, we have to differentiate this function. We will have 6ax plus 2b. And we are given that this, if it's 0, will be 86. So it means that 6a0 plus 2b equal to 86. So b will be 86 divided by 2, which is 43. That's the second value. And to find the value of a, we have to go back to number 1. Number 1 says that minus 27a plus 9b is 43, and minus 3c is 36, give you 9. So let's simplify. So 9 times 43 minus 3 times 36, that give you. So minus 27a plus 279 equal to 9. So minus 27a equal to 9 minus 279, that will be minus 270. So a will be minus 270 divided by minus 27. That should give you 10. So let's check. Yep, give you a little 10. So here we have it. So value of a will be 10, value of b is 43, and value of c will be 36. That is part A. Question number 9, part 2. So using the values of A, B, and C, find the remainder of P of X divided by this. So right now, what is P of X? P of X is 10X cubed plus 43X squared plus 36X minus 9. So this will be, this is actually 2 minus 1. So x is 1 over 2. So p x 1 over 2 will give me, this will be 1 over 8 plus 43 1 over 4 plus 36 1 over 2 minus 9. Let's see what do we get. So 10 over 8 plus 43 over 4 plus 36 over 2 minus 9. That will be 21. So your answer will be 21 and that is question number 9. Moving on to uh, question number 10. So here we have a graph which is y equal to a plus 4 cos bx. So question is, so it says that the curve goes to the point 0, 6 and pi by 6, pi by pi over 6. Okay, so I, I don't work well with gradients. I want to convert this to degrees. So what is pi divided by 6? It is 180. 
divided by six, which is thirty degrees. Okay. Uh, now do let's do one by one. So we have to find the values of a and b. So the curve is y equal to a plus four cos b x. So for the first point, we have when x equal to zero, y equal to six. So let's replace in the equation. That will be a plus four cos zero. So cos zero is one. So this becomes a six minus four will be two. So value of a will be two. So right now we have y equal to two plus four cos b x. So let's use the other point where it says this one which is 30 degrees, as we have shown here, and 0. So let's do that. So y, uh, this is x, y will be 0 equal to 20. Now 2 plus cos of b will be uh, b, x is 30 degrees. So let's solve. We have 4 cos 30 b degrees equal to minus 2. So we have 30 b degrees, that's cos, equal to minus 1 over 2. So this will be cos inverse of 1 over 2, which is equal to, is a minus. So let's use our calculator. So cos of minus 1 over 2, that will give me 120. So b will give me 120 divided by 30, that will be 4. So value of a and b, a is uh, 2, and b is 4. That is part 1. So now moving on to part 2. So let's first write down the equation of the curve. It's 2 plus 4 cos 4x. So using the values of a and b, find the exact coordinates of p. So at p, uh, x equal to 0. That's at p. So let's find that. So let's solve this. Um, sorry, it's actually y equal to 0, because p is this point at x-axis, so y equal to 0, not x. So at p is y equal to 0. Solving this equation will be 2 cos x equal to 0 cos 4x equal to minus half so where is cos negative cos is negative this will be a s t c will be in this quadrant and in this quadrant they will be negative the first is this angle and then the other one will be this one so as we have find out, um, cos x is, this one is equal to uh, 120. So let's find that again. Cos inverse of minus half is 120. So if this is 120, this is here will be 60. This is also 60. So this big one will be 180 plus 60. 180 plus 60, so let's try that here. 180 plus 60, that will be 240. That's for the value of 4x. So x will be 30 and 60. So now in terms of radians, it will be pi by 6 and pi by 3. So this one we have already, as you can see on the graph. Pi by 6 is already given to us. This one is the next one, which is pi by 3. So the point of P will be pi by 3 and 0. That's the point P. Now for this one, find the exact value of M, the coordinates of M. So M is the minimum point here. So we know the equation of Y is 2 plus 4 cos 4x. So this is the baseline. It means that this is the baseline. The graph can go a max. This is the amplitude. 
So the graph can go to a maximum of 4. So 2 plus 4 is 6. That's the max. And the minimum can go to a minimum of minus 4. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So as we have seen here, m is the minimum point. So it means that m, the y coordinate of m is minus 2 at the minimum point. Find this one. So let's solve. We know that y equals 2 minus 2. So minus 2 becomes 2 plus 4 cos 4x. So 4 cos 4x equal to minus 4. Cos 4x equal to minus 1. So 4x become cos of this. That will be cos inverse 1. That will be, that will be 0. So we have a few options. Wait, it's minus 1. <laughs> I made a mistake, sorry. So cos inverse of minus 1, that should be 180. So value of x will be 180, which is pi divided by 4. So m will be pi by 4 and minus 2. That's the value of P and M. That is question number 10. Question number 11. The diagram shows a sector OPQ. So OPQ, that's a sector of a circle. Center O, radius R, and the angle is pi is a theta radians. The perimeter of the sector is 10. So how do you find the perimeter? This is R, and what is this? This is R theta. So we know that this is 10, so let's write this down. So 2r plus r theta is 10. That's the uh, first equation. Um, show them the area of sectors given by this. So how would you find the area? Area is, you have to use the formula, which is r half r square theta. Half r square is r square. And theta, we have to find the value of theta from this one. So let's do that. So from this, we have r theta equal to 10 minus 2r. Theta will be 10 minus 2r divided by r. So we replace back in this one. We have a equal to half r square. Theta is 10 minus 2r over r. So r cancel, cancel. 2 will be. 5 minus r. So we have area given to us as. Okay, so here something happened. <laughs> Mistake we made here is that the area here is not in terms of r, it is in terms of theta. So we have to keep theta, we have to remove r. So let's do that. First equation is 2r plus r theta equal to 10. So make theta, uh, make r the subject of formula because we want to remove r from this equation of a. So r factorized, we have 2 plus theta equal to 10. r will be 10, this, OK? So area will be half r square theta. So half r square will be 10 over 2 plus theta square times theta. This becomes. Um, 100, this is half times, and the base is 2 plus theta squared times theta. So this, this becomes 50. So your area is 50 pi over 2 plus theta squared in terms of theta. As you can see, it is the same as this one. So we say shown as required. Uh, now part two, it is given that theta can vary and a has a maximum value. Find the maximum value of a. So very easy. So first you will say a is equal to 50 theta divided by 2 plus theta power 2. So to find the max value of theta, we know that max value of theta is at d by theta equal to 0. 
so we have to find the value of theta at this point to find the max value of a so first we have to find this so what is dA by d theta we have to use the quotient rule so first one this is here multiply by this minus this times this that will be 2 this and this one divide by 2 plus theta power 4 equal to 0 so now if you cross multiply this goes away we will have 50 2 plus theta square minus 50 theta that will be 4 plus theta inside equal to 0 so if we expand we have 4 um, plus 4 theta plus theta square minus so let's bring this over here we will have 50 theta 4 plus theta 50 50 goes away so here we have theta plus 4 theta plus 4 equal to 4 theta plus theta square so this two goes away so theta square 4 and this is mm, so what else do I have? I have nothing left that is not good, something is wrong with this <laughs> um, ok here there should be 2 here that should be 2 square so 2 theta square minus theta square equal to 4 theta square will be equal to 4 theta is square root of 4 which is 2 now value of a at theta equal to 2 will be the max value that will be 50 times 2 divided by 2 plus 2 square that will be 100 divided by 4 times 4 that will be 25 so the answer will be 25 over 4 units square which is centimeter square for this answer that's the max value of a 25 divided by 4 that is question number 11 question number 12 the line y equal to 2x plus 5 intersect the curves y plus yx equal to 5 at points a and b so find the coordinates of the point where the perpendicular bisector of the line AB intersect with the line this. So the question is actually uh, find the coordinates of the point where the perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So we have to find points A and B and find the bisector of A and B. So let's do that. First step, let's find what is the points of intersection which is a and b so y equal to 2x plus 5 and we have the curve y plus xy equal to 5 so what is y y is this to replace we have 2x plus 5 plus x times 2x plus 5 equal to 5 so expand we have 2x plus 5 plus 2x squared plus 5x equal to 5 so we have to simplify we have 2x squared plus 7x and this one goes away equal to 0 so factorize x outside we have 2x plus 7 equal to 0 so x equal to 0 or x equal to minus 7 over 2 so here we have two points so at x equal to 0, y equal to what? 5. And at x equal to this, y equal to minus 7 plus 5, which is minus 2. So point A, let's call this one A, which is minus 7 over 2 and minus 2. And point B will be 0, 5. Now, for you to find the perpendicular bisector of this, we have to find the midpoint because that's the point where this line pass, the bisector pass. So what is the midpoint of A and B? Midpoint is this one plus this, 
minus 7 over 2 divided by 2 and then 5 plus this will be 3 over 2 that is the midpoint of these two points so now from this we have to find the gradient of the bisector but first let's find the gradient of this one so we'll be uh, find gradient of a b first minus 2 minus 5 divided by minus 7 minus 0 let's find out what value do we have from this so minus 2 minus 5 will be minus 7 divided by minus 7 divided by 2 that will be 2 so which means the gradient of the bisector is minus 1 over 2 so now let's find the equation of the bisector that will be y minus this one over x minus this one so what is uh, this will be 7 over 4 so plus 7 over 4 equal to minus 1 over 2 so now we cross multiply we have 2y minus 3 minus x plus 7 sorry minus 7 over 4 so we arrange you have y this what is minus 7 over 4 plus 3 that will be plus 5 over 4 that is the equation of the perpendicular bisector so question is find the points where the bisector meets this line so now we have to solve this simultaneously so x equal to y so let's replace x here we have 2x x plus 5 over 4 so 3x is 5 over 4 sorry 4 so x will be 5 over 12 and y will be the same so the point they meet is 5 over 12 and 5 over 12 that's the point of intersection that will be your answer for question uh, number 12 so that was the last question if you guys have any other requests leave a comment down below i will get to you guys as soon as possible and once again thank you for watching